Welcome to the shack. I'm Rick. If this is your first time viewing, thank you so much, seriously, for taking some of your time out and checking out my channel. I do a little bit of a variety. I do home improvement, home repairs, projects, tour reviews, tour repairs, and I sometimes I just throw in some off the wall general stuff. On this video, I'm going to bring you along and kind of give you insight of the process that I do when I build something. I built this workbench for my father-in-law and I was on an extreme time crunch. My father-in-law came down to visit family for Easter and when we got together Friday before Easter, just him and his girlfriend, my wife and I, just the four of us got together just so we could kind of have some time to ourselves, catch up, visit. He had mentioned that he had been looking for somebody up there where he lives to build him a workbench. The one person who did stuff like that, I think was had a cabin shop or something, said he was four months out. To me, the guy just didn't want to do a workbench. Here I am, Friday evening, and I'm thinking, okay, my follow-along wants a workbench. How can I find the time to build this for him before he leaves? He's leaving Tuesday morning, so my one daughter has to work Sunday. We decided the whole family is getting together Saturday to celebrate Easter. And then Sunday we do all of our own little things. You know, I have to go to church, and so I wouldn't be home until about 2 o'clock Sunday. So I'm thinking, okay, I got a couple hours Saturday before everybody shows up. And I have the rest of the afternoon and however late I want to work Sunday. And then till about Monday afternoon. I think I could do this. <laughs> I'll just work late Sunday, you know. So we got home Friday. I got some paper out. I started drawing up a quick diagram how I wanted the bench. The only thing I know he wanted is... A two foot by six foot bench. You know, he mentioned all I wanted was like a two foot by six foot bench, something simple. I can't do simple. And he's my father in law, so of course I have to do extra. Got my plans, kind of got it figured out, and, and an idea of what I want to do. I come out here Friday night, check through my lumber, figure out I only need a few extra pieces. Saturday I get up, run down, get the supplies, get back here, get in a load of set it in here, and then get in the house, get ready for everybody to show up. Setting this up kills me in time, so I will bring you along as much as possible, but I don't show you everything. So please, if you have any questions, uh, want to kind of want to know about maybe measurements or something, hit the comment section or shoot me an email and I will reply back to you and let you know. Also, another side note is I had to have this thing be disassembled. He was driving down in his pickup with the fifth wheel, so there really wasn't a whole lot of room I could load it into the fifth wheel. You know, the doors aren't that wide. It'd be very tight to maneuver it in. I can't have it completely assembled and set it in the back of the pickup because the fifth wheel is connected. So there's got to be room for that thing to pivot and turn. So it had to be broke down. The top had to be separate, shelf had to be separate, and the four legs were all laid down in the back of the truck. Even though I told my father-in-law, can you come over Monday, because they were going to say goodbye to some people and they could stop by, and, then I, and he said, hey, we're gonna head over so we can say goodbye. And I go, um, can, can, we're busy, can you come in a couple more hours? I didn't, I couldn't finish it. I wanted it done and covered so I would have unveiled it to him, but I couldn't, so. I said, it was very time stressed, seriously crunching for time, bad. So I'm gonna bring you along, show you the process. Again, any comments, any, any questions, leave them in the comment section or email me and I will let you know. I just didn't have time to do the lot of stuff. I'm going to run this through the planer, run these edges down, sand them on in. That way it gets rid of this valley here. They butt up to get against each other better. Then I'll run them through this way just to plan them down, smooth them out if there's any valleys or anything and make sure they're nice and flat. Have them all planed, squared, and I got it turned around so this is where I want the top. I'm gonna cut these to six foot lengths, then I'm gonna pick the best one for the outside and then the center. Then I'm gonna mark off for the pocket holes. Now, in this one, 
we got a nut hole right here. So I'm going to cut that off. Now I have them all cut to length, I'm going to get them all butted up here, get them all lined up, clamp it down, and then I'm going to start marking for the pocket holes. Now I know this is like serious overkill. But I have 114 of these screws. I Assemble this in two pieces. I'm going to run these both through the planer just for a little, for time saving purposes. So I have to sand it. Take all that down, maybe a 64, 30 seconds max on both sides, just so they're even. Then I'll come back and glue these two centers together, and that will be it. There it is. He has a large vise he wants to set on this. I'm going to design it where the shelves begin about 12 inches in. I'm going to leave the corners so there's no way of getting in the way of the vise. You can utilize your vise and still be able to get in and out of the drawers. So I'm going to put the drawers in. I'm going to put probably three drawers. So with the top being the height of 36 inches, that means I want my legs at 34 and 5 eighths. Because this is an inch and three eighths thick. I think I'm away from all the knots right there. Then I'm going to have to cut it to length. I'm going to be cutting right through a knot. I'm setting this up to cut my dado. This is the bottom that connects to connects to the uh, tabletop. From the tabletop down is 24 inches, so that means I got to set this this way. I've already set these on the bench top, mark the inside where my dado cut's going to be, so I don't screw up and cut the wrong side. I have this first cut set at 24 inches, one inch depth. Then I'll measure up. Where I need to cut, cut it out and cut it a little bit at a time until I get the, the width that I need that it fits tight, set that and I'll cut the rest at the same and then cut out all the center part. Nice, tight fit, perfect. Now this is basically what it's going to look like, except for I still have to build the drawers that go underneath this. But this is where the shelf is going to mount. I have all my cross supports cut. So what I'm going to do now is 
mark everything so I can do my pocket holes on these center supports, one to go, two of them that go in between here, I'm going to do pocket holes on opposite sides. And of course, on the end caps, both pocket holes on both sides are going to go on the inside. Now I have this laid out. 10 inches on each end. I'm going to put a false front here. This is where he's going to have room to put the vise or on this side. He can choose whichever corner he wants to put it on. But this is the front of the workbench. This is a drawer, this is a drawer, this is a drawer. These are evenly spaced at 16 and a quarter inches. I have one by twos in the middle, and the outside frame is a one by three. I am joining this since I have my Woodpecker Ultimate Dowling Jig now, so I'm using this for my very first use of it. So I'm gonna pop this out. This is just set in there to hold it. Again, my reference point. The X goes right to the front, to the stop block. So I love this, it can sit down there. So I can line this up, tighten it up. I don't have a bench vise or anything to set this in, so I'm actually just flipping this over, holding it and drilling it myself. hate getting this thing dirty. It's so pretty! And there we have it. Now I have everything drilled. So I'm going to go through and just knock the edges down. Just make sure there's nothing. <laughs> I'll stop it for a second. Hit all the edges and make sure there's no burrs. I don't want to make sure this thing sits flat. I'm going to put some glue in every hole, put a little glue in these, pound it in a little bit. Let that dry, I'll come back, scrape everything off, and then I'll sand it. Now I'm going to start assembling the face and the edges around the top of the workbench. And I'm going to go around and put all my pocket holes in this side. The rest of it, I'm just going to do finish nails. This is the front, I don't want to see any holes in it at all. The sides I'll put on, it's all screwed together. So now I went and cut my dividers to 22 inches. I'm going to slide these in. Nice fit. Yeah. So these all go in here. Mount these in here, get them all squared up. Then I'm gonna make the drawers. Stop it as much as I can that you see, but it's taking too much time to set this camera up. I gotta get this done. I have this piece of plywood in the shop. So I'm gonna use it to make my bottom shelf. The scrap pieces I'm gonna cut up and use to make the frames of the drawers. I've gone over the edges with my flush trim bit. Two inch deck screws in to hold it in. I'm going to go back over now and use a roundover bit just to take a little edge off this. Now I have my roundover bit, and I do mean 
just ever so slightly as you can see this is the straight edge and it's just taking a little bit off just enough I don't want to go too deep it's just to knock the edge off so I'm gonna go around do all this to the rest of the top of this now on the legs I did a little dado cut here and I need to notch the plywood off so this will fit in there take my little depth gauge here set that lock it up I just grab me a line that's the depth all four corners then I'm gonna set the depths so I know exactly how far down I gotta go so that's exactly where I gotta be right there that's gotta be notched out Set this on here. I know this is all gonna sit on it right. Right. Before I assemble the drawer, I need to put a groove in the inside here for the bottom. Unfortunately, I don't have a bit that is 3 16ths of an inch. And that's the thickness of some leftover wood I had. I'm utilizing everything I got left over. All this was leftover plywood. I'm just utilizing everything and anything. So I got a bit. It's an eighth inch bit. I'm going to set it at a quarter inch depth. What I'm going to do with the sides, I'm going to run to cut the full length. The front, I am going to mark about three eighths of an inch or so. I don't care if it's a little wider than the cut on the side, so, but I need to mark it so I know where I'm going to stop. Okay, I got everything set. I put a line on the bottom here, so I want to make sure this is the bottom, so when I put it to the fence, I'm going to put it that way and do my cut on the front of the front and back I have my mark here and here where I'm going to stop my cut so I'm going to run these all the way through the sides and the fronts will be plunged and I will stop at the marks and then we're going to check it I got it set up for my second pass. I checked the fit. It is absolutely perfect. So I'm going to do the plunge. Then I'll finish this one up and we're done. All done. Now I gotta cut the bottoms. There we go. I'm gonna be better at this. 
That's lined up right there. I like that. I'm gonna shoot a couple nails in. I like this Milwaukee Fuel finish nail. Don't have to worry about any air compressors, man. I really like this gun. Before I do that, I'm going to take the edge off all around so it does slide in easier. One drawer down. So I'm having these back just a little bit, but as far as the height up, I am doing what they recommend. 13 sixteenths of an inch. Set that in there like that. I just kind of get lined up. That's good. Then I use my centering drill bit. I love these things. So I'm going to have to move that. It's good there. There. Sweet. Now I have a piece of wood here split so I can set this over that without sitting on it. Keeps it flush. That's it. I have a piece of poplar I had sitting in this shop for probably about four or five months now. I'm going to use it for the drawer fronts. I got my list. I'm going to cut them to length, take it to the table saw, cut one side and then cut the other side to width. Then I'm going to angle the blade 20 degrees and just shave off a little all the way around give it a little profile. And then we're going to mount them to the drawers. Now that I have my blade set at 20 degrees, I'm going to get my fence set up.
and it says on the back. After we got that set up like that, we flipped it back over, we disassembled it and laid it, got it all set up in his truck and then basically after about an hour of the video, he was gone. So I mean, I stressed, I didn't know if I was even going to have it done. I actually told him to show up uh, two hours later, so give me two more hours, I, I, I'm, I'm almost done. So I mean, I was really, 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 really pushing and I was stressing big time, but I got it done. And you saw it actually came out nice. Because of this video, I'm going to start doing some short videos on specific things, making drawers, certain types of joinery, uh, things you will normally do building a large project, but I'm gonna just show the overall project. If you want anything specific, like on this one, you can click on certain videos and it will show you that specific type of joinery or specifically making a drawer, hanging the drawer glides, mounting them in there, stuff like that. But they will be short, specific videos. So there, there's some things in the works. The channel's growing, and with that, some things will change. Be blessed. Get out there in that sh garage, in that shop, in your shed, in your basement, wherever it is you have an area to work. Just get out there, clear a spot, get your project, maybe even build you a bench. In any case, build it for a friend, always build it for family, but most importantly, build it for your sanity. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next video.